You know the best place to go for lunch? Penn Station East Coast Subs. Penn Station has hot grilled subs. Those fresh cut fries are awesome. Yeah, you'll probably eat too many, but they are so good. Oh, and fresh squeezed lemonade. The chicken teriyaki, incredible. But people also love the Philly cheesesteak. I mean, how could you not, right? It tastes great, and they make it right in front of you. Yeah, whether it's online ordering, in-store, or sports season catering, you gotta love Penn Station. There's one near you. Go now. Penn Station East Coast Subs. Warning, if you're offended by vulgar language, you might want to lay back on your fainting couch in advance. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by HelloFresh and by... The fact that the boosters are keeping my latest case of COVID relatively mild. COVID boosters, helping to bring you dick jug variety since 2021. And now, The Scathing Atheist. Hey, this is Jim, a co-host of the Feel Your Fandom podcast, where everything is fandom and fandom is everything. And based on just how often we have to address toxic pop culture fans who can't stop complaining about just how woke everything is because it promotes diversity and inclusion, it's never been more clear that we did in fact descend from filthy monkey people. It's August 10th. And it's Duran Duran Appreciation Day. All right. <laughs> Cannot promise I'll save a prayer, but I am hungry like the wolf. <laughs> I figured you maybe. I'm the only one who did the hair. I'm no illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I did the same thing. I'm Heath Enright. <laughs> and from Thomas Edison's New Jersey, Ann Arbor, Michigan, and Waycross, Georgia, this is The Scathing Atheist. On this week's episode, Connecticut rules on plague freedoms... An airline gets sentenced to Christianity. That's weird. And Don Ford will be here just in case the COVID gets me before we reach the outro. But first, the diatribe. One of our goals on this show is to let you know what the fuck your stupid uncle is babbling about before he even starts babbling about it. To disambiguate the lie du jour of the Christian right so that you're not caught entirely off guard. Well, the latest rant that Fox News is going to implant in your stupid uncle is the idea that the State Department is promoting atheism. And we actually talked about the inciting incident on this over a year ago on Skeptocrat, but here's the actual story, right? So the State Department has a branch called the Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights, and Labor, which is tasked with, according to their mission statement, bolstering democracy, promoting accountability, upholding internationally recognized labor standards, and advancing the rights and equity of, quote, members of marginalized racial, ethnic, and religious communities, indigenous persons, persons with disabilities, and LGBTQI plus persons, end quote. So you can already see why it's in the Christian rights crosshairs, right? Anyway, back in 2021, that bureau publicly offered $500,000 in grants to groups, quote, promoting and defending religious freedoms inclusive of atheists, humanists, non-practicing and non-affiliated individuals, end quote. Which is a big deal, right? This is foreign aid money that was meant to go to some of the many places where very often apostasy can merit a death sentence or otherwise heinously abrogate a person's rights. Now, Notice the wording here, right? Because this is this is important. The grants were to support groups that were, quote, promoting and defending religious freedom that includes dot, 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 all these different terms for atheism, right? That's entirely different than promoting atheism. But that's too subtle a distinction for the GOP's culture warrior leaders, or more accurately, it's too subtle a distinction for those leaders to assume their constituency is going to notice, so about a year later, this Republican congressman first sees this shit. He starts accusing Biden's State Department of promoting atheism abroad. Specifically, Indiana Representative Jim Banks sent a letter to Secretary of State Antony Blinken demanding to know why the State Department had, quote, used appropriated funds to support atheism and radical progressive orthodoxy across the world, end quote. That that. Radical orthodoxy, presumably, being not murdering people for leaving their dad's religion. In the letter, Banks says that the Bureau's actions would, quote, be analogous to official State Department promotion of religious freedom, particularly for Christians in China, end quote. 
but it wouldn't, right? Like the analogy, given the actual fucking wording in the notice of funding opportunity, would be to official State Department promotion of religious freedom inclusive of Christians in China, which the State Department does all the fucking time. Friend of the show, Hemet Mehta, did a pretty extensive write up on this on his Substack, where he cited numerous examples of this very same bureau offering funding up specifically to Christian minorities, Muslim minorities, and Hindu minorities, as though they're promoting religious freedom regardless of the religion. Which is, of course, according to my math, a prerequisite to promoting religious freedom. Now, for their part, the State Department didn't bother to respond officially to Banks' stupid fucking letter because they recognized it to be the publicity stunt that it was. But that prompted more asshole Republicans to jump on board with the accusation. In February of this year, chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Mike McCall, sent another letter with the same spurious accusations, the same twisted logic and the same demands for disclosure. And look, That sounds like a reasonable request, right? Congress wants to know where the taxpayer's money is going. That's kind of their job. Except in this case, as you'll recall, the money was earmarked for groups that were promoting atheist inclusivity in places where that shit can get you killed. Like, you know, there there, there just might be some reason not to publicly divulge this information other than a secret plan to turn the rest of the world into fucking godless commies. But despite the risk of disclosure, the State Department did ultimately respond to McCall by basically saying, "Okay, fine, here you go. Just don't, you know, put this information in a press release for the whole world to see. So they put it in a press release for the whole world to see. Specifically, he named Humanist International as a recipient, possibly the only recipient. We don't know. And Humanist International, I guess, passed the money along to affiliated groups in Nepal and Sri Lanka, which McCall also mentioned, up to and including some details of a training meeting in Kathmandu that definitely should not have been publicized. Basically, he risked the lives of atheist activists to score some political points with a misrepresentation of the State Department's actions and a misrepresentation of what religious freedom even fucking means. Because here's the thing. Throughout this press release, McCall tries to tarnish Humanist International by pointing out that they work with groups that promote atheism. He specifically mentions the American Humanist Association and American Atheists. These are groups that he says, quote, often take actions which are antithetical to the idea of religious freedom, end quote. To be clear, when he says that, he means stuff like trying to keep mandatory prayer out of schools and religious displays off of public property. Actions which are precisely and exactly, I don't know, fucking thetical to the idea of religious freedom. Right? They are religious freedom. That's what the term means no matter how many times you try to redefine it. Because because here's the bug in their logical program. They cannot see the difference between promoting the freedom of atheists and the denigration of their religion. To them, that's the same thing. I mean, yes, all the other religions also preclude the truth of their faith, right? But they do it from a place of equal bullshit. Atheism threatens Christianity in a far more fundamental way because atheism is true. And promoting that truth necessarily threatens the religion in a way that no other religion could. But despite their legitimate fears and their illegitimate logic, it is perfectly possible to be an atheist without being an atheist at them. I mean, I don't do that, but other atheists do. A lot of other atheists. Most other atheists. But atheists are like the quiet guy at the party, right? They're a place to project all your insecurities. They're a place to put all your doubts. They're a conclusion that you fear. And so when you correct your stupid uncle and tell him that the State Department isn't promoting atheism, they're promoting religious freedom, which necessarily includes atheism, Don't expect him to understand the difference. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the hour hand and minute hand of my second hand, Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, are you ready to clock in? Yes. Slow and girthy never fails. (laughs) Indeed, hour hand. I can't believe you missed the chance to call Heath the tall one. You are slipping, no illusions. Uh, Slipping. Hours are... Longer. Any, oh, anyway, so while I come to grips with my mental decline, temporarily tall, I suppose we should take a break for a word from this week's sponsor, HelloFresh. Okay, and what's after crab legs? Uh, the pasta bar. Pasta? Are you hearing yourself? Pay attention, guys. What, what's all the yelling? What's the ruckus about? Keith and I are training for the buffets at our Las Vegas live show. Exactly. They say the house always wins. But they were not talking about the buffets and us when they said that. I imagine that's true. But but why do you need to train for the buffets? 
because we're spoiled by HelloFresh's delicious meals and perfect portions. That's why. Wait, what's HelloFresh? Great question. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You can skip trips to the grocery store and you can count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun and affordable. That is why it's America's number one meal kit. And those buffets have a lot of competition with 40 chef crafted recipes to select from every single week from family friendly to fit and wholesome. HelloFresh has new and exciting recipes to try and love. So the buffets are for like the bargain? No, they're actually pretty expensive. But yeah. you know what is a bargain? HelloFresh. It's 25% cheaper than takeout and less expensive than grocery shopping, too. Just choose your recipes and receive fresh pre-portioned ingredients so you can get cooking quick. It's true. Anna and I were looking to cut down our takeout budget this year, and HelloFresh was an amazing way to keep eating well for less. That's why I, Eli Bosnick, personally endorse HelloFresh with Tom's Life. You gotta keep up with all the shows for that one. Okay, guys, where do I sign up? Just go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 scathing and use the code 50 scathing for 50% off plus free shipping. So I go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 scathing and use the code 50 scathing for 50% off plus free shipping. That's right. Hey, Noah, where are you going to eat at all those Vegas buffets? Uh, is there any chance one of them has like a hot pocket fountain? Hot pocket bar? No, I don't think so. Maybe someday. Yeah, someday. And now back to the headlines. In our lead story tonight, according to the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, there's at least one way in which religious people aren't allowed to kill me with their stupidity. And we learned that last Friday when the court upheld a 2021 Connecticut law that eliminated the religious exemption from immunization requirements in schools. So at least for now, there is a limit to how disease ridden kids can be before their parents send them into the festering petri dish of public education, which is a step in the right direction from the nadir of sanity that we currently occupy. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a tricky one. Is there a compelling public interest in avoiding mass death? Mm, we better nice check that. with some legal scholars and the founding fathers on this <laughs> one because that's, that's hard to decide. I mean, to be fair, right now, you're dealing with your second bout of COVID, so they're really losing their right not to be killed by you, which is almost as sad if no, you think about true, it. No, that's true, though, yeah. So one of the most important consequences of the COVID pandemic in America is the way that it focused our attention on religious exemptions to vaccination requirements, mostly for bad, but also for good here and there. On the bad side, murderously ignorant Christians all over the red state suddenly found a long lost biblical clause that radically shifted their sincerely held beliefs in the way most likely to own the libs and the actual number of religious vaccine exemptions skyrocketed. But to a lesser extent, this renewed focus forced rational Americans who might not have been aware of the it's OK to give my kids measles if Jesus says so clause to reevaluate its utility. And at least in Connecticut, that led to revoking the exemption altogether. And of course, that led to a bunch of disease riddled Christians protesting in the streets. Yeah. Try that in a small town. Like, seriously, you'll fit right in. And no, yeah, no, it'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a great way to get it. sick. Just once, I would like to see the I get my religious beliefs from memes on Facebook protesters treated half as badly as the please stop murdering us protesters. Right? It'd be such a refreshing yeah. change. <laughs> no shit. Now, the, the plaintiffs in this suit included a group called We the Patriots USA, Inc. Come on. So stupid. Right. Look, so you, stupid. Already, you're the fucking bad guys. I'd venture to say it is impossible to simultaneously want both to be called We the Patriots USA, Inc. <laughs> and any single public good. You're going to Walmart's trying to redeem Trump bucks if you're yes. involved. Yeah. In that mm -hmm. for sure. No question. <laughs> Sign in your name in lowercase. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that should have been plenty to find against him. But the court actually did a whole fucking law thing and found that, quote, only one court, state or federal, trial or appellate, has ever found a plausible claim of a constitutional defect in a state school vaccination mandate on account of the absence or repeal of a religious exemption, end quote. Not adding, and that court was probably in fucking Idaho or some dumb shit. <laughs> right. Clarence Thomas rises out of his coffin. Did someone call for me? Wait, who do you think Clarence Thomas is? He's alive. Is it a, a vampire scenario? You're doing a bad guy. He's a vampire. He's sleeping. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> I wish he wasn't alive. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe by the time this goes to air, you never know. Oh, fingers crossed. So Connecticut AG William Tong praised the decision, calling it, quote, a full and resounding affirmation of the constitutionality and legality of Connecticut's vaccine requirement, adding, quote, vaccines save lives. This is a fact beyond dispute, end quote. And though I applaud his efforts, I also recoil a bit at his naivety because no facts are beyond dispute when you're talking to religious people. Right? Some fictions are on beyond dispute with them, but none of the true things are, which is why, of course, they're already making noise about appealing this one to the Supreme Court. And if ever there was a group of people primed to fine for the folks who want to spread disease with their stupid, it's the Roberts Court. So, you know, I guess enjoy this while you can, Connecticut. And in prayer circle jerk news, I'll admit when you hear stories like the ones we talk about on a regular basis, it's easy to get a little bitter and nihilistic. It's easy to think that you might as well give up because it feels like we're never going to win. Well, this week we got a win exactly and exclusively because of two people who refused to give up. And so we're going to talk about it. Yeah, I mean, you know, courts allow state to forbid knowingly transmitting vaccine preventable disease was the good news where we started from. So like there's there's a lot of room to improve. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So first of all, big thanks to everyone who sent in this story to scathingnews at gmail.com. This week, the first to send it was Tony C, not to be confused with our lovable mascot. Did you know that not only can you send us news to scathingnews at gmail.com, but once a week, I reply to one of those emails with Heath's cell phone number. What? So, you know, keep sending them in. Okay. I, it's not a very useful thing to have now that it's No, <laughs> it's not. It's not. Anyways, our heroes in question are Mackenzie Saunders and John Magaha, two atheists and former employees of Aurora Pro Services, a North Carolina home repair company. That company begins each day with a mandatory prayer meeting. These meetings, which began at 10 minutes but eventually lasted upwards of 45, included Bible readings, demands for prayer for poor performing employees, and mandatory group recitations of the Lord's Prayer. And look, that fucking sucks. So Saunders and Magaha asked to be excused. And in response, the owners of Aurora Pro Services not only refused their request, but threatened their employment and halved John's pay just for asking. Jesus Christ. I mean, I, it really says something about your religion, though, right? Like When people are like, can we please stop paying me to listen to this in an air-conditioned room and get back to paying me to do a dangerous job repairing roofs in the South Carolina <laughs> swamp heat? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, nobody could physically force Saunders and Magaha into the meeting room, so when they stopped showing up, they were promptly fired and they rightly sued. And I am happy to report that this week they were awarded a combined $50,000 in damages from their former employers. Okay, that's great stuff. But fun game, if you're stuck in a meeting like that, every time the boss finishes a prayer, you add like, and I pray for the opposite, amen. Just a father. <laughs> Get a little impasse going. That's a fun yeah. way to <laughs> to lose $50,000 by being an asshole, I guess. You could just do what they did instead. Oh, can you just pray that the meeting ends? Right? Like that would Ooh, fuck them up. Yeah. If God, if you really exist, please end this meeting. Here's and the chance I will to know. win my faith. Yeah. <laughs> And look, the pessimists in our audience might be thinking, so what? This was an open and shut case. We're lucky that it went the way it did. This isn't exactly something to celebrate. But according to a follow-up post, Aurora has now let future employees know that they don't have to attend those meetings anymore. There was a real and demonstrable cost for bigotry. And what bigots care about way more than anything else, including their beliefs, is consequences. So call it a win even if it falls into the no-duh category. Yeah, right. They're like, don't get me wrong. We still love Jesus. Uh, we just we just don't love him 50 grand worth is all. It's just, <laughs> exactly. that's a lot of fucking money. <laughs> so maybe, maybe pray to get that 50 grand back. See how it goes, guys. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> and in right on cue, Anon News, nice. the human trafficking themed Christian movie Sound of Freedom was having a great run since hitting theaters last month. But then the universe decided to projectile vomit some irony directly into the movie's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> According to reports out of Missouri, 
One of the movie's investors was arrested last week and charged with a Class A felony for being an accessory to child kidnapping the thing that the movie's about. Weird. Who would have thought the people behind the extrajudicial child-taking movie might be accused of extrajudicial (laughs) child-taking? Look, there's exactly one group that clearly and obviously benefits from misrepresenting the actual dangers and methods of human traffickers. Human fucking traffickers, (laughs) right? Let's not pretend we couldn't see this kind of shit coming. Yeah, there, so opposite of irony, but vomit in the mouth still uh, yeah. holds, I would mm-hmm. say. And a big thanks to Billy for sending the story. Within seconds of the news breaking, Billy was the first one. Nice job. Scathing news. I think I think Billy just wrote up, hey, here's the guy from Sound of Freedom getting caught trafficking people, and then just like waited to hit send until the news broke. Yeah, sure, yeah. It was a good bet. It was a good bet. <laughs> he said it as a delayed <laughs> message on Spark. <laughs> <laughs> Great work. Scathingnews at gmail.com. So quick background in case anyone missed it. Sound of Freedom is the story, asterisk, of Tim Ballard, a QAnon lunatic and also a devout Mormon lunatic. Sorry, redundant. QAnon and Mormon who quit his job at Homeland Security to start a vigilante commando squad called Operation Underground Railroad. They claim to go around the world rescuing victims of child sex trafficking, acting on tips from... Psychics in Utah named Janet. That's a real thing (laughs) that happened in a failed mission of theirs. In reality, it appears to be more like a handful of dude bros with no experience in law enforcement, except for maybe sort of Tim Ballard doing cosplay because they find it to be fun. And even if his vigilante squad is ever helping, which is a very generous assumption, the net effect of their existence is clearly making the problem worse because Vigilante squads of idiots tend to do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In all realms. And to be clear, to be clear, they are not helping in any way they have ever been able to demonstrate in anything other than their insane fucking fictional movie. Right. <laughs> Yes, yeah, no. The evidence that they've done a single noble act is exactly tied with the evidence that we all live in the same house along with a talking mythical pug from Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much less evidence than well, that's they have true. Done yeah, good like, so here's how the investor comes into the story. The Sound of Freedom production team was having trouble getting their budget together, and they decided to crowdfund what they needed. And apparently, a guy in St. Louis named Fabian Marta was in the middle of some kidnapping adjacent activity stopped what he was doing and sent some money on GoFundMe to this fucking movie. But according to Mr. Marta's attorney, the criminal charges are, quote, unfounded, which seems like a weird choice of a word, right? Like, if you're mm-hmm. innocent, just say that. Or, or if they're untrue, say that. you would say, yeah, yeah right. You would say untrue. The, the attorney also added, quote, Mr. Marta had nothing to do with custodial kidnapping Mm. he was essentially a landlord Mm. end quote and again the word choice there is crazy it's way too specific about what's being denied yes yeah yes i love what you guys have done with this place blackout curtains love it nice secure locks on the inside of the door not (laughs) sure about the plastic on the floor but hey i'm I'm not an interior designer Right. But also, like, when your lawyers hedge in their bets on what kinds of kidnapping you're uninvolved in, that's not a good sign. <laughs> right. So clearly now, I think you did whatever non-custodial kidnapping Yeah, means. right. Yes. I'm sure you've now done that. For sure. <laughs> and here's the most important thing about this whole story. Barbie wins and Sound of Freedom loses. That is the most important thing. Barbie was amazing. (laughs) Barbie already has over a billion dollars in box office sales. Great work. And those are all actual people sitting in theaters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rather than empty seats purchased in the Pay It Forward ticket app like they're using for Sound of Freedom. 10 million of the tickets approximately that were sold for Sound of Freedom were empty seats like that from the Pay It Forward app. So moral of the story, we care about Feminism and gay sex and hot chip, and we like kids who don't get trafficked. <laughs> this is woke America. Get fucking used to it. Right. Deal with it in your face. Right. Next up in headlines in This Dumb Isn't Free News. Apparently, <laughs> you can be court ordered to have to pay a hate group to teach you how to hate group better. 
which literally happened this week when the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Texas ordered lawyers for Southwest Airlines to complete an eight-hour religious freedom training course from none other than the Alliance Defending Freedom. What the fuck is happening? Jesus. Yeah, that, that's the group that litigated the Masterpiece Cake Shop case as well as the bullshit do-over they got with 303 Creative. Yeah, they got a do-over. Like, sun was in my eyes, Mulligan yes, Supreme right. Court case. Mm. Fucking in the court, yeah. Son of God was in my eyes. <laughs> Fuck off. Well, and also, of course, the ADF is listed by the Southern Poverty Law Center as an anti-LGBTQ hate group for stuff like supporting the recriminalization of gay sex, defending state-sanctioned sterilization of trans people, and repeatedly asserting that LGBTQ people are more likely to engage in pedophilia. Those people are going to teach Southwest's lawyers about how to properly respect the rights of others. Okay, no, I get what you're saying, Noah, but... Have you flown on Southwest? Well, right like, no, I get in it. terms yeah. of human they need to rights learn, violations and yeah. respect of others. Right. Yeah, and to be fair, they are setting a spectacular amount of Supreme Court precedent these days over at the ADF. So, like, I feel like maybe I should take the class just for a sneak peek at the future. Yeah, would, you know? Honestly, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so so first of all, quick thanks to Evan, who was the first to send us this story at scathingnews at gmail.com. 917, Evan, no, 917. No, no, but yeah, but, but yeah, yeah go this for entire it. case is incredibly <laughs> fucked up. It, it started when a rapidly anti-abortion woman who worked for Southwest took issue with her union sending some officials to the Women's March in D.C. because the march was, in part, funded by Planned Parenthood. Okay, her salary from Southwest is funded by so many dead babies I, just thank all you. the time. Who's flying? People with free time and money. Who has that? People who killed their baby because it was smart. Yeah. Oh, exactly. See, I was going to say, like, look, you're the cheapest airline. You are the I need an abortion quick airline. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, they are the abortion of airlines. Yeah. So, no. <laughs> she... she <laughs> But but she, she she objected through all the official means. She was told to go fuck herself in official ease. And then she proceeded to flood her union president's inbox with pictures of aborted fetuses. And she started trashing the union reps on social media. Well, Southwest has a policy against publicly talking shit about your coworkers. So they fired her for harassment. But then she sued the company for violating her religious freedom. What? And won. What? In a jury trial. Yes. The judge decided, the jury decided that her religious freedom of harassment was violated? Yes. The fuck is happening? See, this is why we need the class, guys, because... I have no fucking idea why she won. Well, no, yeah, right. Neither Yikes. did Southwest. Right. So as part of the verdict, the judge ordered Southwest to send out a notice to all employees explaining that they're not allowed to violate workers' religious freedoms with their social media policies. But perhaps of the opinion that since harassing fellow employees isn't religious fucking freedom, Southwest sent out this notice that basically said, yeah, we're not allowed to infringe on your religious freedom, which is why we didn't and we don't in this case is <laughs> bullshit. Please don't harass your coworkers online. Just great work by the legal team over there. Love that. Yeah. Well, they, th that response did not sit well with Judge Brantley Starr, guess who appointed him, who <laughs> dictated a verbatim statement that they had to send out instead, as well as ordering the aforementioned ADF training for the company's VP of Legal, VP of Labor, and VP of Litigation. It further orders that they cover the training group's food, accommodation, and other what? travel expenses throughout the training. And they shall require a shrubbery as well. <laughs> and like, what the fuck? And, and if they thirst for human touch, you shall slake it, is my <laughs> gavel. Yeah, what the fuck is happening? Okay. Now that I realize it's just those three guys and those guys already know better, which sounds like they do, they're just getting a paid vacation to roast an ADF training, which I would definitely be in for, Wait, right? So like, <laughs> here you go. Here's your fucking Jimmy Johns. Let's do this thing, idiot. <laughs> well, they, no, it's that fucking ADF guys. They have to fly the ADF guys out to them. So it's those guys getting the vacation. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, but so, no, I should emphasize here, by the way, that the ADF, at least until this order came down, was completely uninvolved in this case. Right. They weren't representing the shitty harassment lady. They weren't involved in the appeal. They didn't even file a fucking amicus brief. Nothing. This judge just decided entirely on his own to involve them in such a way that financially benefited the hate group. 
because I guess because financially benefiting hate groups is to an increasing degree the federal judiciary's whole goddamn thing at this point. Yeah. yeah. The federal judiciary are people. It's important. Just like super PACs. Yikes. And in Wooniversity news, <laughs> thanks to a court ruling out of Oklahoma last week, universities have to teach a curriculum made of real things in order to sell a university degree to people. Hmm. And that feels like good news out of Oklahoma, which is very, very exciting. But it's also bad news, if you think about it, because we needed a court ruling to confirm that, which means there was a challenge to the idea of truth being good at universities. Yep. The challenger, of course, was Wisdom University, or Woo, a Christian <laughs> online diploma <laughs> mill that tried to sue the Oklahoma State Regents. The so-called university was mad because they teach fucking nonsense and therefore didn't get accreditation from the Board of Regents and therefore got told they can't pretend to be a school and sell their nonsense education as a product to people. Yeah, and folks, keep in mind that the State Board of Regents already has massive exceptions for religious education right, built yeah. into their bylaws, right? Yeah. They weren't teaching enough stuff by Oklahoma religious school standards. Yeah, Oral Roberts is there. They couldn't yeah. <laughs> get up to that level. Right. No, it was less of a, well, you can't just teach nonsense and more about, well, you can't just teach that nonsense, right? You can't teach <laughs> exactly. any nonsense. <laughs> and a big thanks to Stormy D for the link. Scathingnews at gmail.com if you want to help out. 443. No, okay. no, no, no. Yeah, no. Again, do whatever you want. So in response to the accreditation requirement from the fascist epistemology zealots at the Oklahoma State Regents, Wisdom U filed a lawsuit claiming that requirements about teaching the truth violate their religious freedom. And yeah, they do. They do. And they should. Definitely. <laughs> but crucially, the court ruled that Oklahoma's educational regulations do not violate Wisdom U's legal religious freedom according to constitutional law. And that's because the rule about teaching true things doesn't say we're banning religious bullshit. It just happens to ban religious bullshit. Right. Uh, you go to jail for murdering. We don't oppress the murderess. It's it's a fine line, <laughs> but an important one. Yeah, no, but, but we're very much included in the group of negative things you want to ban. That's not a defense, guys. That's not... <laughs> exactly. That helped so your case. The ruling basically just said kind of that. It said, like, it's not the region's fault that you're in the circle of the Venn diagram labeled bullshit. Like you can move if you want out of that circle <laughs> or don't move. We don't care, but these are the rules. But the judge said all that way more politely, although you could hear the derision sneaking out at times just a little bit. For example, the ruling said, quote, the plaintiff makes a series of allegations that obtaining proper accreditation will involve the regents in plaintiff's religious affairs. But these allegations are speculative at best. Translation, if knowing true things conflicts with your religion, eh, it's kind of on you. It's kind of on you. Yep. Yeah. I, look, just once I want a judge to go all the way and just be like, well, I sincerely believe that you don't sincerely believe that. Now, how dumb is how dumb is that rule? <laughs> You're a liar. Impasse. Great. No more doing that. So the ruling also added, quote, consumer protection is a legitimate state interest obviously, and there is an equal need to protect students attending a secular or religious institution from paying for a degree that does not meet certain minimal objective standards, end quote. Translation, why do we even have religious education now <laughs> that I'm saying <laughs> exactly. it? Right. You can hear right. it between the lines. And here's my favorite part. And another really big thanks to Stormy for also sending a link to the Wisdom University <laughs> website, because I might not have gone to this along with a few highlights from their curriculum. So I went here. Their so-called university seems to have the following departments. Spiritual growth, biblical leadership, scriptural healing, what? prayer, faith and hope, kingdom studies, what? spiritology, blessing studies, confession laws, biblical finances, and what? of course... Business and spirit-led investing. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> and, and now now imagine that TV commercial for like the 90s technical college with the scrolling list. Do you remember these? Ooh, yeah, 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 of course. You can take. 
The mark of a winner. That's one of the classes they have. Harness the power of money. By buying things. Healing made simple. Secrets of successful prayer. Becoming a spiritual giant one. So <laughs> there's a lot to that topic. They they needed at least also a part two, but one. It's really a broad a overview. Yeah, no, you can become a spiritual <laughs> tall guy after the first yeah. one, but for the, to, to be a true giant. Yeah. yeah, a primer on spiritual giancy. Also, <laughs> how to walk in super abounding grace. That's the name of a class. Not just abounding, God damn it. Super Yeah, abounding. they don't even have the 100 level abounding. <laughs> no, that's, class. that's great that's insane. insane. That's great. If that's what's what's going on there. I feel like that's just a big leap without the prereq. Anyway. But Heath, Heath, yeah. do they have any classes that are just nonsense words? Uh, sure do, Eli. Great question. They have voice activated system one word controlled universe. That's all there one it name. Is. Thank oh! you. That's, oh! That's all one name of a class they have. I want to take that class. And I think this is my favorite one. <laughs> also, I think Stormy's favorite one listed in the email as well. Strongholds of the Mind 7. 7? The Devil Knows Your Hot Button. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure they stole that last one from a porn I've seen, but other than that, I thought they were pretty funny. <laughs> well, they, they stole the others as from fucking subchapter titles from the David Icke book that we're reading, I think. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I remember it from somewhere. Yeah, so, I mean, bottom line, religious liberty in Oklahoma, I think it's going to be fine. You're going to be fine. If you want to learn about the devil knowing your hot button level seven and other very serious topics, you can still waste your money all you want at Wisdom U, but you won't get a degree that rises to the prestigious level of Oklahoma public education anymore. No, oh. unfortunately. And finally tonight, in ET or OT news, in a spectacular confluence of idiocy this week, I saw an op-ed on foxnews.com that looked at the recent UFO hearings uh, in which Congress debased itself by enshrining witnesses Robert Stack would have laughed off into the congressional record <laughs> and asked, what if those aliens are actually Satan? That's right. <laughs> oh, Old Testament. E.T. Old. Got it. Yeah, got mm -hmm, it. Yeah. Took me a second. I'm slow. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, America's number one most popular source for information that purports to be news presented the thoughts of retired Army officer Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis, who admits that we could be a semi-popular roadside attraction for aliens, but it's sure. far more likely that those supposed aliens are actually angels or demons. What? It might be angels specifically? Yep. The God of the universe was like, hey, uh, Gabriel, go down there uh, next to a camera probably and do, you know, a little zoops up with your, with your ship there. <laughs> they're they're going to lose their fucking minds about this. I'm doing a thing. I'm just setting, I'm setting up a thing. Don't worry about it. Just do it. Just do it. Guys, guys, who keeps getting caught being just a raindrop? You're making us look stupid. <laughs> a bug really close to the camera. God damn it, guys. So, in his article, McGinnis points out that there are actually sightings of strange aerial phenomena dating back thousands of years, uh, apparently without realizing that another way of saying that is, I'm exactly as gullible as people were in the Bronze Age. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the level of fucking foxicity from this Fox News article is breathtaking in this moment. It is. It mentions that lawmakers are demanding subpoena authority to learn about any military secrets regarding this stuff. And then it says... What are we to make of this? Historian Josephus wrote about chariots and soldiers running around in the clouds was the very That's next the, idea. Yeah, those, yes, that actually transitions within the op-ed. And <laughs> while he admits that, quote, some readers will dismiss the possibility of spiritual beings, he's quick to add in contrast, apparently, that, quote, many of us accept that there is much we don't understand, end quote. <laughs> As though anyone was disputing that there isn't much that Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis doesn't understand. And I'm not an expert. Yeah, man, we know, Robert. We know no, you're not we an noticed. expert on anything mm -hmm. ever. Go ahead. We noticed. And if you're thinking he doesn't cite his sources on this, you're underestimating the good Lieutenant Colonel. He points out that no lesser authority than Billy Graham published whole books of firsthand <laughs> accounts of angelic intervention. Not, none of which contained evidence, but still, it was a whole book. <laughs> yeah. Well, he just knows we're getting close to the end of the Ike book, and he wants that to be next. Oh, okay, you know. yeah. Right. Dude, you should have stuck with Josephus. Billy Graham really went downhill on your source. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> My other favorite moment from the article, it says, quote, 
Jews and Christians will recall in 2 Kings 2.11 that Elijah went up into heaven like a whirlwind aboard a chariot pulled by horses of fire. Was that a UAP? <laughs> End quote. And no, man, you, you just identified it, first of all. Yes, also, that's right, a, yes. a fictional book that you were right, quoting in, from. E <laughs> the, yeah. You understand all that, right? Right. And lest Fox News be mistaken for providing more intellectual heft than the average cartoon crazy person with a sandwich board, he closes by saying, quote, the challenges we face today, pandemics, natural disasters, out of control crime, wars, and more, are likely influenced by the spirit world, Ooh. which is leading us to the prophetic end times. And then remembering what he was talking about, he goes, and might manifest itself as a spike in UAP sightings. <laughs> and go, boom, tied it all together at the end. Reasonable. Yes. And as much as I hate to reinforce his end is nigh rhetoric, this actually is the end of the headline segment. So, Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Josephus. And when we come back, Don Ford will voice some fantasy and adventure. Hey, podcast listener, do you want to see the guys live on stage? Do you want to do it in a city that's already full of fun stuff to see and do? Then buckle your knuckle for God Awful Movies live in Las Vegas, October 28th. We'll be breaking down the QAnon wet dream that is The Sound of Freedom with special guest, Carrie Caviezel, the wish-granting weasel. And don't forget, you can secure yourself a seat in the first few rows, plus a night of food, drinks, and fun with the boys with our VIP and Platinum Night tickets. You might even get to watch Heath Gamble. <laughs> But don't wait, our live shows sell out faster than an all-you-can-fuck buffet. So head to godawfulmovieslive.com and grab your tickets while you can. Sorry, did you say a wish-granting weasel? She's a friend of Carl. Sure. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Because it was an individual artist who used AI to help him with his work. It, it, it was like using a background thing. Oh, see, I thought that they just put like a, a mid-journey picture in the book. See, this is what I'm talking about. People need to learn how to Google about this stuff. It's, it's crazy. Okay, I don't understand. Can it draw sexy Liz Warren dressed as a nun or not? I, I mean... Please, Don, this could be my whole month. Just... Uh, technically, it could. Ha! See, I knew it. Great. Thank you. Thank you for that, Don. Hey, hey guys. Guys, are you ready for Bible Peace Theater? You mean the part of the show where we act out the Bible so our listeners don't have to read it? I sure am. Where were we? Oh, we were at the book of Daniel. Yes! Twonk Daniel. Ah, uh, damn it. I forget what that means. People loved Twonk Daniel, Heath. No, it's true. They, they did. I don't like who's made the show. I, I know, man. We used, to, we used to make puns about Pat Robertson, remember? Hey, we still make that. We just also have Twonk Daniel now. So what happens next in the book? Okay, so, so the king writes a letter to the world telling us the story so far. Dear the world, it's me, Nebuchadnezzar, king of all kings, all that, coming at you Carrie Bradshaw style. So you've heard the story of Daniel, my delicious little matzo ball and his dream interpreting powers. Oh, he's so cute, I'm Jewish. Well, guess what? Last night I had a different dream. <laughs> Wow, that is a huge tree. Sup, it's happening. Oh, hey, one of God's angels. Have you seen this big tree? Oh, yeah, my kids made it. I don't think they did. Tomato, potato, yes, they did. Anyway, God says cut this tree down and cover it with iron bands so it lives among the beasts. The tree? Yep, the tree. Okay, you got it, I guess. So, so I Nebuchadnezzar, up, wait, wait, Nebuchadnezzar, what are you doing in the booth? We, we fucking, we doodly dude. No, we doodly dude back into my letter. I'm still talking. I'm doing a letter. I'm talking. Right. Right. No, okay. They're like parentheses. Like parentheses. Exactly. Hey, did you know that some of the earliest mathematics using parentheses came from your period of history? Hey, did you know that story's boring? Leave the booth. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going. I'm going. 
Anyways, so I head over to tell Daniel, who I've given the name Belshazzar, all about my dream. Now you don't get to hear about the earliest writings on the concept of zero. Oh, no. Wait, whatever. You whatever. You have COVID. So that was your dream? Mm-hmm. So what do you think? Oh, honestly, I am astonished. Wow, really? Oh, yeah, big time. I'm going to be astonished for like a full, unbroken 60 minutes. Oh, you meant now. You're, you're oh, astonished yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, Na- uh, yes. Astonished. So, should I go get lunch? Yeah, probably like, go get lunch, yeah. Okay, okay, I'll go get... Do you want something? Oh, Colin? yeah, will, will you get me, a, like, a big salad? Uh, sure, do they have one you like? Like, what's the one you... No, just just like a like a big salad. Okay, you can't just order a big salad. There's like eight billion options in a salad. You can't say just fine, whatever soup then. What soup? You can't just order soup. There's whatever million... soup I they have. I'm just astonished. Oh my god, fine. I'll bring you a soup. So an hour later, Daniel is done being astonished, I guess, and he tells Nebuchadnezzar what his dream meant. Okay, I'm back with your soup. I got you minestrone. They didn't have a lentil. I will literally have you killed. I will okay, have you fair, killed. fair. So, okay, the dream. Great, let's hear it. Okay, it was about you. Love it. Okay, you're going to eat grass and be wet like a cow. Mmm, I am. Oh, totally. So, you mean that in like the metaphorical sense, right? Oh, no, 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 no. In this case, I mean it quite literally. So when you say wet, like foam party wet or sad boo? Oh, the second one. Oh, sad boo. Anyway, a few months later, sure enough, I'm walking through a field and I just lose my mind and eat grass like an ox. Anyway, I did that for seven years. We've all gone through that phase, am I right? And now I'm all better. Praise God. Oh, am I allowed to narrate again? Great. Anyway, so Nebuchadnezzar dies and his son Belshazzar takes over. Uh, Wait, I thought Daniel was called Belshazzar. No, Nebuchadnezzar called Daniel Belteshazzar. This is Belshazzar. Oh, okay. It just seems confusing. It's really similar. Oh, someone hasn't seen the gay side of Pornhub. Well, this is why I didn't know what Twunk was. You guys Uh, don't know. I'll watch gay porn right now. I watch it sometimes. Anyway... One night, Belshazzar is having a feast when a ghost hand starts to write on the wall. Ew. Are you you guys seeing this? There's like a ghost hand writing on the wall. What is that? Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. What's it say? Oh, darling. Uh, Yes, my queen. What is it? Why don't you get that guy your father used to, you know, be roommates with? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll call him up. Yeah, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. He fucked your dad. Yup, got it. Thank you. You called for me, your highness. Hi, Daniel. Yeah, so as you might have noticed, there's a hand writing nonsense on the wall. Oh, mm mm-hmm, I saw. Yeah, so you want to take a crack? Let me know what's going on there. Okay, yeah, sure. Let me take a look here. Hmm, uh, meeny, meeny, takele, ufarsen. Um, what language is that? Um, god language? It means God's going to end your kingdom. You've been found wanting, and he's going to give your kingdom to the Medes and the Persians. Wow, those three words mean all that you said just now? Yeah, it's pretty much shorthand for God at this point. Oh, bummer. I fucked your dad. I've heard. Thank you. Thank you. So sure enough, Belshazzar is slain and Darius, the Median king, takes over. But Darius likes Daniel and makes him his chief official. And of course, that's not something that the other Medeans are fans of. Um, your highness, are you sure you want Daniel to be your chief officer? Sure, why not? He's a he's a good guy. Good at, you know, reading, ghost writing. Oh, what's not to like? I don't know. I mean, he's vegan. Eh. Uh, gay? Dude, everybody's gay. That's true, everyone's a little gay. Oh, hey! What? Um, nothing. Oh, hey, apropos of nothing, do you know that there are, like, people in this kingdom who have gods that, like, aren't you? What? (laughs) But I'm the head of the kingdom. 
I know, I know you're the head of the kingdom, but don't worry, I actually wrote out this decree for anyone who has any gods that aren't you to be thrown to the lions, and all you're gonna have to do is sign it. Oh, wow, that's sure handy. I know, right? I know. What's this sticky note that says, this'll fix Daniel on it? Um, Daniel is gonna correct my spelling. Got it. Your Highness, what is the meaning of this? Oh, sorry, Daniel. My men caught you praying to... Well, not me, so... <laughs> into the lion den you go. Seriously? Yeah, sorry. I, for the record, I kind of got, like, rabbit season, duck season into it, but in you go. Uh, oh! <laughs> yeah, uh... You okay down there, Daniel? You get eaten by lions yet? Oh, no. God just sent an angel to stop us. That's right, motherfuckers. Who wants to wrestle? Let's go. <laughs> oh, please. I've gotten deeper scratches from Kellyanne Conway. Uh, how's it going now? Oh, uh, I think she's winning. Can I come up? Yeah, bring him up. Also, hey, when you get up here, we're all going to be Jews now. Oh, great. You guys are lucky I'm not my brother. Her brother killed a dog. Yeah, no, we heard. He did. So now that everybody's Jewish, Daniel has a vision. Okay, everyone, everyone, listen. I've just had a vision. What are you talking about? You have visions all the time. Uh, bu 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 no, that was interpreting other people's visions. This time, I had my very own Vision. Okay, yeah, got it. Uh, what's up? Okay, give me a second, because I'm going to doodly-doo. Be careful with that. Someone doesn't like to share the voiceover booth. Get out of the Bible, Nebuchadnezzar. You're dead now. You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. No. Uh -huh. Okay, anyway. In my dream, four beasts came out of the sea. One was like a lion with plucked eagle's wings and a human heart. I gotta be careful around saturated fats. Roar. The second was like a bear with three ribs between his teeth. Roar. Sorry. Roar. The third was like a leopard with four wings and four heads. What, what are, are we, a podcast? podcast? The fourth beast had ten horns and big iron Teeth. I'll have you know my dentures are actually ceramic. Anyway, then the Ancient of Days was there. And there was fire, and the beasts were all like fighting each other like catty. Oh, it was a real scene. Yeah, sounds like it. So what do you make of that? Oh, uh, I don't really know. But then... I met this guy in a park bathroom and asked him what he thought about it. Hey, you know, I actually have a policy about talking about your dreams. To, you know what? Never mind. Never mind. Anyway, he told me that the four beasts are four kings who will rule. And all that stuff will happen to them. What, what about the plucked wings and stuff? Uh, well, the Bible is pretty sure those are like metaphors for countries that would have existed when the Bible was written and or translated. Got it. Anyway, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. Uh, quick thing. Why were you talking to a guy in a park bathroom? Okay, shh, 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 shh. Don't worry about it. You guys never told me anything. Everybody, everybody, I, I had another vision. Wow, really? Oh, yeah. This one was all about goats. There were big goats and there were small goats. Goats knocking stars out of the sky and with horns in between their horns. I mean, I didn't get any of it. Did you find a guy on Grinder to explain it to you? How do you know about Grinder? I googled gay stuff during the swoosh. Now I know. Uh, uh, good for you. Thank you. No, believe it or not, the angel came down and explained it to me. Okay, Mr. Goat, you put that concept of truth down right now. <laughs> Great. You broke truth. 
Yeah, sorry about all this. The boss gets a little heavy-handed with the metaphors sometimes. Uh, who are you? Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm Gabriel. Daniel. Cool. Ostrich jerky? Oh, no thanks, I'm good. Great, more for me. Anyway, the goats are Greek kings. Ooh, Greek kings, got it. Anyway, we've got like three more of these. They're all kind of samey, so, you know, big Greek war coming. King Cyrus, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. So, you sufficiently awed now? Uh, that's what they tell me. I mean, you know what? It's fine. It's fine. All right, I'm headed out. Uh, hey, Daniel? Yes, Gabriel? My brother killed a dog. We know. And that's Daniel. All right. Hey, a little meat on that one, at least. Mm-hmm. Till the end when it was a metaphorical prophecy three chapters in a um, row again. It, it is the Bible. Yeah, I don't know, guys. All these dreams and visions. I mean, what were you even supposed to learn from the book? Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. Hit it, Anna! Man, you'll make a hungry lion beg like a cocker spaniel. Lead us on a mission, serving body curves, vision. Put the king and all his boys on a new diet plan. You'll say, you better work, hunty, cause I ain't gonna smoke your skunk weed. In fact, I'm gonna be punting you out, so you better serve cunt. We are like- Damn, Dan, you will come through. King Nebuchadnezzar's main move. Two players suit, say you made the king a Hebrew. Knows where his dudes are, you'll find them in the boudoir. Dance for the king's joy with the battle Dream Boy. Dream Boy, Dream Boy. The battle Dream Boy. Face, 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 make your diet plant face. Toss your friends Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego in the blaze. But don't worry, cause the angels always save the Jews from danger. As the new royal arranger, Daniel really isn't phased. And he says to the king, hey, sugar pop, I dreamed your reign will never stop. So conquer us all and be our top. Now watch me death drop. Damn, Daniel, come through. King Nebuchadnezzar's main boo. To play a suit, say I made the king a Hebrew. Knows where his dudes are, you'll find him in the boudoir. Dance for your king's joy with the Bible's dream boy. Make your booty wiggle, wiggle. Make your belly jiggle, jiggle. Make your monarch giggle, giggle as he has decreed. And when you read the book of Daniel, see it's not a moral man. You'll get to the end and you'll say, The fuck did I just read? Damn, Daniel, come through. King Nebuchadnezzar's main do. To play a suit, say you made the king a Hebrew. Knows where his dudes are. Find him in the boudoir. Dance for the king's joy with the battle dream I just read. Before we take two and call them in the morning, I want to thank Marsh and Anna and Heath and Eli and everybody else who worked harder so that I could take a vacation. It was great. I had a lot of fun, but it's also great to be back because my job is awesome. Anyway, that's all the blasphemy we've got for you tonight. We'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show, The Skeptic Ride, debuting at 7 Eastern on Monday, and even new episode of our sister show's Hot Friend Got Off of Movies, debuting at 7 Eastern on Tuesday, and an even new episode of our half sister show, Citation Needed, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, the show's envelope wouldn't even seal right if I neglected to thank Heath Enright for always being Ken enough. I also want to thank Eli Bosnick for being so entertaining. I want to thank Don Ford for being enjoyable as well. Um, I, I know the Ken thing shouldn't be applied to the Barbies of the show, but Anna's Ken thralling and Lucinda's Ken lightened, so I kind of I wanted to add that anyway. I also want to thank Jim from the Feel Your Fandom podcast for providing this week's Farnsworth quote. Incidentally, if your fandom tank needs topping off, you're going to find a link to his show on the show notes. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's and last week's and the week before's best people. And far be it from me to say I'm going to do it next week. But come on, my, my lungs are burdened by COVID. 
it's a three weeks long list. I got there's just it wouldn't it wouldn't be physically possible. So with apologies, I will get you next week. I promise. And if you'd like to hear your name in that breathless list as well, you can also make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash scathing atheist, whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad free version of every episode. Or you can make a one time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help but not with money, you can also help a ton by leaving a five star review, telling a friend about the show, and following us on social media. And speaking to social media, Tim Robertson handles that for us, and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also wrote all the music that we use in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com. Rainbow sound and weasel noises at the same time. <laughs> what noise does a rainbow make in your head, Eli? Yeah, right. No, I know. Yeah, what? It's kind of like glittering. Like, yeah. 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 Like reading rainbow? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved. My name is Carlos. I'm a robot operator. I started out in sanitation. What I would tell those uh, that are interested in, in working for National Beef, sky's the limit here. People are friendly. If you're a go-getter, you're going to accomplish it. And this is the place to do it. Looking for a job with an opportunity to grow? See Carlos' story and apply now at nationalbeef.com careers or call us at 419-257-5535.